You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. The options market can be a confusing place. Sorting through the daily avalanche of data, alerts, updates, articles, and analysis to find the most important information is an overwhelming prospect. But now you have help. Welcome to the Options News Rundown, the only program that breaks through the noise to bring you the most important news and information from the world of options. Every day, we bring you the top five option stories curated by the options experts at theoptionsinsider.com, the premier source for options information. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in options trading education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's Live Advantage Group coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. And now it's time to break through the noise. It's time for your Options News Rundown. Good morning. Today is Wednesday. June 19th, 2019. This is your Options News Rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli. Our first story today is from investing.com. It's the top five things to know in the market on Wednesday. The first thing to know is Fed easing bias is expected in the policy decision. The Federal Reserve is widely expected to leave interest rates unchanged when it announces its policy decision at 2 p.m. Eastern but analysts are convinced that the U.S. Central Bank will signal a more dovish stance in order to set the stage for cuts later in the year. Market focus will be on the dot plot included in the economic projections published alongside the statement that reflects policymakers' projections for the future path of interest rates. A half an hour after the session, Fed Chairman Jeremy Powell will lay out the summary of the monetary policy meeting and deliver remarks on the current outlook. Fed fund futures price in a move of more than an 80% chance of a rate cut in July, with an additional two cuts by the end of the year holding just below the 50% mark. Ongoing trade tensions between the U.S. and China, coupled with muted inflation data, have increased the pressure for more policy easing. U.S. President Donald Trump has also consistently attacked the Fed for not lowering rates with Bloomberg reporting on Tuesday that the White House studied demoting Powell back in February. When asked on Tuesday if he still wished to demote Powell, Trump responded, let's see what he does. The second thing to know today is caution reigns on Wall Street ahead of the Fed. U.S. futures remained in a holding pattern pre-open near the unchanged mark ahead of the Fed policy decision and Powell's appearance. Muted trade came after a strong finish on Wall Street Tuesday with bulls buoyed by Trump's tweet that negotiations with China would move back into motion ahead of an extended meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping at the G20 next week. Solid gains spread to Asian shares overnight with Japan's Nikkei 225 jumping 1.8% and China's Shanghai Composite ending a percent higher. European shares underwent profit-taking on Wednesday after comments from European Central Bank President Mario Draghi on the likely need for additional stimulus sent the region's stock market to their best performance in five months on Tuesday. The third thing to know is oil markets are wary of another surprise inventory build. The Energy Information Administration Petroleum Report is due Wednesday, with markets wary that that U.S. crude stockpiles could stage an unexpected build for the third straight week. Consensus forecasts draw in crude stockpiles of 1.08 million barrels for the week ended June 14th, but the prior two EIA reports registered an unexpected surge in inventories driving oil prices lower. In its own report, released late Tuesday, the American Petroleum Institute saw a draw of 0.812 million barrels last week. 
The fourth thing to know today is CBS preps an offer to rejoin Viacom. CBS reportedly once again preparing a buyout offer for Viacom in the coming weeks, according to sources cited by the Wall Street Journal. Preliminary discussions have already taken place over the layout for the deal in what would be the third attempt to reunite, reunite the companies that were broken up over a decade ago. Wall Street Journal emphasized, however, that the deal was far from certain, with fixing the price for a stock transaction being one of the major hurdles. The fifth thing to know today is Google, Alphabet, and Oracle are in the tech spotlight. As Google parent Alphabet revs up for its annual shareholder meeting on Wednesday, a group of shareholder activists plan to propose that the company breaks itself up before regulators force it to do so. We believe that shareholders could receive greater value from a voluntary strategic reduction in the size of the company from asset sales compelled by regulators, said the, propose, the proposal from Some of Us, a US, U.S. group that aims to curb the growing power of corporations. While it is likely that the proposal would succeed, given the majority share owned by Alphabet's top two executives, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, the proposal highlights the recent increase in antitrust investigations into large tech firms and the widening scope for misalignment between outside shareholders and the company's founders. Also in focus, the tech sector shares of Adobe surged more than 4% in pre-market trade Wednesday after reporting quarterly earnings that topped estimates. Oracle is scheduled to release its own numbers after the market close. Our second story today is also from Investing.com. Harley-Davidson strikes a deal to build a smaller bike in China. Harley-Davidson will partner with China's Changjiang Motorcycle Company to build a new smaller motorcycle than its trademark Big Hogs, making good on promises to move more production outside the United States that have angered President Donald Trump. Trump last year threatened to impose higher taxes on Harley after it made plans to move productions for European customers overseas, part of a longer-term strategy for dealing with lower sales in the U.S. and higher costs because of trade tariffs. The partnership Harley outlined on Wednesday is aimed both at taking a bigger chunk of China's huge bike and moped market, while also fitting into a plan to cut costs and source half of all sales outside the United States by 2027. The new bike would have an engine displacement of 338 cubic centimeters, one of the smallest in the company's 116 year old history, and would be sold in China from the end of 2020. Harley's existing range of motorcycles are generally far larger and come with high price tags and engine capacities of more than 601 cubic centimeters. Our third story today is an interesting juxtaposition to the second story. Apple explores moving 15 to 30 percent of production capacity from China. Apple has asked, asked its major suppliers to assess the cost implications of moving 15 to 30 percent of their production capacity from China to Southeast Asia as it prepares for a restructuring of its supply chain, according to a Nikkei Asian Review report on Wednesday. Apple's request was a result of the extended Sino-U.S. trade dispute, but a resolution will not lead to a change in the company's decision, Nikkei said, citing multiple sources. The iPhone maker has decided the risks of depending heavily on manufacturing in China are too great and even rising, it said. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is news you can use for today, Wednesday, June 19th, 2019. This is your Options News Rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli. Trade smart and have a great day. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in options trading education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's Live Advantage Group coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider.
The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. 